What's up my fellow knife making friends? Today we are going to be going over the Hamon making process and what it takes to get a knife to look like this. So to tell you the truth, this is my first Hamon attempt and it took a lot of experimentation to get the look that I was after. And if this look right here is what you're after, then I'd watch this video because it'll probably save you about three days worth of hand sanding. So let's take a look at exactly what I did to this knife. This poor, poor knife. Hey mom! Mom, I'm watching Forge to Fire. They said Hamon. What's a Hamon? Mom? So real quick, for those of you who don't know, a Hamon is a distinguishable line in a knife blade separating a hardened portion of the steel against a softened portion of the steel. It is created using a process called differential hardening. Differential hardening is usually accomplished by placing special clay or furnace cement onto the spine of the knife or any portion of the blade you do not want to harden. The clay or cement acts as a heat sink, letting the clayed portion cool much slower during the quenching process, thus not allowing it to fully harden. Now, depending on the steel type, this will show up as a hamon after the blade is etched and polished. Steel type plays a big role in what the final hamon looks like. In this example, I'm using 1080 steel. With steels like 1080, 1084, 1095, W1, W2, and O1 also producing hamons. Now, there's a lot more to this basic information, but for now, this is all you really need to know. I advise you to do some of your own research into appropriate steel types if you're thinking about trying this for yourself. I'm Casey Neistat. My lens doesn't work like his. Now, if you want to see the beginning portion of this build, I will link it at the end of this video on the end screen, and you can head over there and check out the beginning portion of this knife build. But for now, we are going to be starting out with a knife that is ready for a hamon, which includes a knife that has been sanded to 150 grit and also degreased with rubbing alcohol. I like rubbing alcohol over acetone because rubbing alcohol doesn't leave any residue and acetone will leave residue. Now it seems some people sand their blades to a higher grit than 150 grit, but my theory behind sanding to 150 grit is that the furnace cement which I am using, which is just Rutland's furnace cement, adheres better to a rougher surface. That way your clay stays in place. Now you can see here that I am wire wrapping the blade and I really didn't have the correct wire to do this. The wire it had on hand was way too thick and I just couldn't get the pattern on the blade that I wanted to get with the wire in place. So I ended up scrapping that idea and going back to a regular old no wire furnace cement application. And I'm just taking a popsicle stick here, which is a great knife making tool, by the way, and really scratching this furnace cement into the surface. And I really do think that this helps keep the cement in place. Now, again, this is my first Hamon attempt, and I'm not an expert at clay application or furnace cement application, but I have worked with this furnace cement in the past on other things, and uh, it really needs to be scrubbed into the surface in order for it to stick. Now I actually applied, I think, way too much furnace cement here to the spine of the knife. Um, you really don't want to have that much cement applied to the spine of the knife because it can act as uh, too much of a heat sink and actually let the heat bleed back into the hardened portion of the blade, giving you a slightly softer hamon. This is what I've read and been told. So uh, as far as how much thickness you want, it's really hard to say. You're just going to have to experiment with the clay or the furnace cement that you're using um, over the course of a couple of different knives. That's really kind of all I got to say about that. So after letting it dry for a couple of days, we will be doing the heat treatment by putting it into the oven. So for a quenchant, I'm going to be using Parks 50 rather than the standard canola oil. You really need a fast quenchant to get a good hamon. Seems like a lot of people use water. Water is a super fast quenchant, but you also run the risk of cracking using water. Uh, Parks 50 is, in my experience using it so far, is a much faster quenchant than canola oil. It just seems like you get a harder blade out of the quench when using it. I also ended up preheating my oil to 120 degrees. Now you don't have to do that because Parks 50 is a formulated quenching oil. You can use it at room temperature, but I keep my uh, quenching outside and uh, basically the oil is whatever the temperature of the ambient air is, which is inside my shed at this point in time is around 30 degrees. Now in the summertime inside my shed is upwards of 110, 120 degrees. So for consistency sake, I actually heated the oil to 120 degrees. That way I have a consistent quenching over the course of the year. 
So I've had people ask me what it's like heat treating in an oven versus heat treating in a forge. And to tell you the truth, heat treating in a forge is a lot of fun. There's heat, there's flames. You gotta be careful not to burn your shop down. Huge flames, you're constantly taking a magnet, burn your face off, all kinds of safety gears, leather gloves, it's fast paced, it's noisy. So how does that compare to heat treating in an oven? I wouldn't recommend getting your face this close to the oven. So here we're doing the quench. I heated the blade up to 1490 degrees, let it soak for a minute or two, and then quenched into the Parx 50. Now I was trying to do an edge quench here, but my blade was a little bit too big uh, for the quench tank that I'm using, which is an old paint can. And what's interesting here is that as I kind of move the knife back and forth in the quench end, you can actually see where that oil line was on the blade. And that ended up staying, that look ended up staying on the knife, and you can actually see exactly where that oil line was. Um, this isn't something that I did on purpose. I was just trying to keep my face out of the way in case the thing flared up and created a big fireball. And here we are file checking it and we got a good hard blade with this quench. Again, like I said earlier, using Parx 50 seems like it gives a much better um, overall result in the quench. So here I'm just putting the knife on the granite surface plate and you can see that we have developed a slight warp towards the end of the blade. Now in order to help fix the warp, I decided to do a clamp temper. Um, on a knife that has been uh, differentially hardened, clamp tempers can only have uh, so much effect, I think, because only half of the blade is hardened and the other half is soft. So um, you're not gonna get as much of an effect with a clamp temper as you would with a blade that's been hardened all the way through. Now what you do in a clamp temper is you clamp the knife straight and then temper it under the clamping pressure. And with a blade that's been hardened all the way through, a lot of times that will straighten the blade uh, completely straight or as straight as you make it uh, during the clamping process. Here what I did is I clamped the blade slightly past center and that gave me a couple thousandths of an inch, which I guess every little bit helps. But uh, in order to get this uh, warp fully out, we had to take this to the bench vise and crank on it. And this is, oh, this is terrible to watch. I hate watching it and I hate doing it. But the nice thing about a differentially hardened blade is that with the soft spine, it will bend and take a set, meaning it's fairly easy to bend this back into shape using a bench vise. And here back on the granite surface plate, you can see that we are, we are perfectly uh -huh. straight. Perfect. So now it is on to the hand sand. This is everybody's favorite part. And this right here is the key to success in a hamon. Like I said earlier, before the heat treat, we left off at 150 grit and we're gonna start back at 150 grit to help remove all that scale. And here's where it gets interesting because I tried a lot of different things because hand sanding to a certain grit before putting the blade into acid is uh, sort of what makes the difference in how your hamon looks. Now, it's not the key factor in how your hamon looks, but it does play a large part in how your uh, end result is gonna look. And I tried a lot of different things, so we might as well start at the beginning. So here I sanded up to 600 grit. Now it's super, 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 super important to not skip any grit steps because if you skip any grit steps and any deep scratches remain in the blade, those scratches are gonna be amplified the second you dip this thing into acid. So you need to be meticulous at your hand sanding. And I mean meticulous. If you uh, leave one tiny little deep scratch in your blade, and dip this thing into ferric chloride, you will see that scratch from a mile away. So this is the first attempt. This is the blade sanded to 600 grit. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that the blade is completely oil free. And again, I'm using rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol as other people may call it. Now I'm just gonna explain exactly what I did here, but be advised that this didn't work. 
At least it didn't produce the look that I was after. But essentially what I did was I dipped it into the ferric chloride and left it sit there for about three or four minutes. Now the ferric chloride solution that I'm using is 50-50. 50, 50, 50 percent ferric chloride 50 percent water that's a very strong ferric chloride solution and i left it in way too long now here you see me using quadruple lot steel wool and essentially what i'm doing is i'm just redistributing all of the oxides and uh, helping to distribute the acid all over the blade now i did this four times so it was in the acid or in the ferric chloride uh, for a couple of minutes then brought back out and scrubbed into the ferric chloride brought back out and scrubbed into the ferric chloride brought back out and scrubbed and then I used Windex with ammonia to neutralize the acid. And I wasn't real happy with the result that I got. So I went back and started dipping it into the acid again, thinking that maybe it didn't get a deep enough etch. And that made my mistakes even worse because the uh, ferric chloride just etched even deeper and the blade ended up looking like total crap. There was a bunch of really deep um, etching marks in there and um, I wasn't sure what was causing it. So I started over which meant going all the way back down to 220 grit and resanding everything to 600 grit. Now, I have no idea what I was thinking here, but I just decided to take some ferric chloride after sanding it to 600 grit and wiping it directly onto the blade. And needless to say, that looked like absolute crap. So I went back and sanded out all of my mistakes again, which again meant going back to 220 grit and completely resanding the blade. Now on both of these attempts, I noticed one thing that remained consistent, which were scratches in the blade that weren't there when I started. Now I can only attribute those scratches to the fact that I was using steel wool to wipe the blade down after dipping it into the ferric chloride. So I scrapped the steel wool and I just used a shop towel instead. And I also realized how powerful of a solution my ferric chloride was. So on this next attempt, I sanded the blade to 600 grit and then only leaving it in for about five seconds per dip. Then bringing it out using a shop towel to redistribute all of the oxides and the ferric chloride over the surface of the blade. And then back into the ferric chloride for another five seconds. This was repeated four or five times. I can't really remember. And then once that was completed, I'm just using some plastic polish because that's all I had on hand. This will change later, but basically I am removing all of the um, surface oxides that have formed on the blade. And that revealed this, much less deep scratches in the blade. So the problem lied in the steel wool. Now it wasn't as smooth of a surface finish as I was hoping for. So now I'm thinking that my finishing grit wasn't fine enough. So I went back to 600 grit, resanded the blade through 2000 grit. I then repeated the same process of into the acid for five seconds, wiping it with a paper towel, into the acid, wiping with a paper towel four or five times. And then that gave me a look that I was happy with. And we have zero deep scratches in the blade. We have a perfectly smooth finish. So as I finish out the knife, let's quickly recap. So we sanded to 2000 grit meticulously, not skipping any grit steps and doing an extremely good job at the hand sand to 2000 grit. That's extremely important. We also ditched the steel wool for a paper towel and we only dipped the knife into the acid for a couple of seconds before pulling it back out and wiping it down with a paper towel to help redistribute the oxides. We repeated this dip white process four times before neutralizing the acid with Windex with ammonia. Now at this point, you're gonna wanna polish the blade, but I decided to skip this step and put the handle on the knife first and then polish the blade. Um, it turned out okay, but honestly polishing the blade would work a lot better with the handles off of the knife. And for the polishing, I am using Mother's Metal Polish and I am simply using my fingertip and a little bit of metal polish to polish the blade. The polishing process goes something like this. A little bit of polish, rub it on with your finger for a couple minutes and then wipe the polish back off and then repeat that process 10, 20, 50 times until you get the look that you want. And this is after about 10 polishes. Now I did decide to continue polishing this blade after the video was completed and all of these pictures were taken and the uh, blade basically just gets shinier and the hamon stands out even more. So all in all, I think this is a really cool look to a knife. It really sets itself apart from all the other knives out there that don't have hamons. Um, and it's even something that non-knife people can appreciate, meaning 
They can look at the blade and know that there's something different about it, but they're not sure exactly what it is. In my opinion, I think that this is uh, worth doing. It's something that I'm going to do again, 100%. It was a lot of fun, despite the fact that, uh, well, I messed up a bunch of times. So hopefully in the next video, I'll be able to show you exactly what I am doing to achieve a certain look. You gotta remember that uh, making hamones is uh, kind of an art form. It's something that everybody seems to have a different method in order to produce. Literally books have been written on polishing hamones, just the polishing stages. So you can imagine how much can go into it. Um, there's things like different quenchants that provide different looks. There's um, different clays. There's different thicknesses of clays. There's different polishes you can use. Um, all kinds of different things that can bring out a different look in the hamon. If anybody has any suggestions or are willing to reveal your secrets to hamon production, let me know in the comments below, and it will be greatly appreciated. So I hope this video has been helpful to at least one person. In any case, if you liked the video, please hit the like button, please subscribe if you're not subscribed, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.